I recently watched a video by YouTuber Great Scott where he made his own power supply and I thought I'd follow that and make a dual version of it. This is how I did it. So let's just do a quick rundown. What we've got here are two AC to DC power supplies. The mains voltage will come in via this switch here and it's going to power both of these units. The output voltage from these is going to be a DC value of 12 volts and for each channel they will go into these DC to DC buck boost converters. This converter here can basically adjust and regulate the voltage and current that you require to the output terminals which are these banana plugs. To make this a little more user friendly instead of sitting there twisting these pots we're going to desolder these and extend some cable out to these larger potentiometers that are going to sit on the front display. I've got some knobs here as well so once I figure out how long they need to be I'll shorten off these potentiometers and place the knobs on and they'll provide sort of a nice and friendly easy way to tune the voltage and current for each channel. Also I've got these displays here that show a voltage and current reading. The case I chose was from my local electronics store and basically what I like to do is just sit down the front panels and shift all the components around that are going to be installed on those front panels and just figure out a layout that I like. Then I use a combination of a ruler and some rough sketching just to figure out how the layout's going to go. And once I'm ready, I put some masking tape down to help transfer over these measurements. Now, one of the main reasons that I've been told to roll back from the center onwards is that Say if you started from left and worked your way for right to right for all your spacings, if you've made a small amount of error here, basically all that error for all your spacings can translate until finally, by the time you get to the last side, you can have quite a large error. So basically by measuring from the center line and backwards, you can limit and mitigate that error on the way outwards. And this is basically the layout I ended up with that I think will work best for me with the voltage and current pots on each side of both channels displays and then with the plus and minus terminals down the bottom here. The best part about this is that the screens will also be flush so basically easy access to all the knobs you know I've got a lot of space to get my hand in there from each side and to adjust those and vice versa I've got a lot of radius I guess you'd call it to put cabling in without interfering with each separate channel so that's the spacing that I'm quite happy with. Then I used a combination of a Dremel, a drill and a file to make the necessary holes in the front plate and then I could peel off that label I put on that had my dimensions marked on it. And with the holes in the front done, now I can start installing the equipment. I also use some hot glue just to assist holding the components in place and to stop any of them rotating. Then I use a little stick just to gauge the depth of the knobs and then I can transfer that mark to each of the pots. And then I had to trim them short so that the knobs would sit on the flush and not be sticking too proud off the faceplate. So basically what I'm doing now is, is taking the last components of this and just sort of trying to fit them in a way that I think is going to suit the enclosure. Um, the problem with these power supplies is that there's really only a few ways to attach them to the case and even though there's tons and tons of these different standoffs um, and I, I could always drill through the bottom of the case, it's actually quite difficult to arrange them in a way that suits. So what I've done is I've cut this old piece of perspex, or well it's not even really perspex, it's, it's a diffuser out the back of a TV. And what I'm hoping that I can do is when this sits in here, it now gives me a uniform base plate where I can shift and place all my components on there exactly how I want them. And I can make whatever holes I need to to have them stand off. Then I used the marker to transfer the holes onto that plate that I made and then I could secure it to the bottom of the enclosure with some screws. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I desoldered the potentiometers from the buck boost converters and chose some suitable wire to extend those connections out to the larger pots on the front panel. And then I fixed those two buck boost converters onto a plate in basically the same method that I did the power supplies in the bottom of the case. Finally, I used a combination of soldering, heat shrink, cable ties and hot glue to wire up my power supply. Which left me with two halves of the enclosure, one half being the AC to DC side and the other half being the buck boost control side. But before I put the two halves together, I did some testing first on the AC to DC power supplies and I set their output voltage for exactly 12 volts. Then I could hook up the 12 volt DC output into the control side, close it all up with the screws that came with the case and test it out. And there we have it. So that's my take on Great Scott's DIY power supply. Obviously mine just being a dual version, it was just as simple as doing a double of everything he did on his version. I've used it for about a month now and I've found it really, really useful when you want to have more than a single voltage. Uh, for example, this relay circuit that I built that is designed to run on 12 volts but is activated by a 5 volt input. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully you picked up some tips and please don't forget to like and subscribe, thanks.